because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ Listen, this would have been the time where um, Sister Leandra Lewis, she was going to bless us this morning. We were all queued up. I was ready to hear from her this morning because I know she had she was going to have a, a song that was going to touch our souls. But we can't make that connection. So unfortunately, no song. I can't sing. My voice is a little hoarse. I got to save it for my sermon. <laughs> Amen. But we want to lift up and thank God for all of our singers who've been blessing us. Um, been blessing us throughout these summer months and will bless us into the fall. Um, but at this time, my brothers and sisters, let's focus our attention on the message that's coming up. This for the entire month, the entire month of August, um, I've been sharing from the series, um, sermons from the summer. And these are just sermons that I've, that I've Use. These are life examples that I received growing up as a child that I've shared with them, with you, and they got an adult spin to it. They have an adult spiritual spin to it. I pray that you've been blessed. Um, this sermon series is coming to a close. This is it. Next week we're gonna shift into another. Um, we're gonna shift into another series. Um, but I pray that you've been blessed by these sermons. The best thing about this is at any given moment, if you want to go back and you want to watch or re-watch some of the sermons that we've, we've shared in the past, you can feel free to do that so on our YouTube channel. Listen, when you subscribe to us, and I want to make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you know of someone else who's watching us, tell them to click the subscribe. I think we're up to 800, 800 subscribers thus far. And my goal, I'm praying that by the end of the year, we will have 1,000 subscribers. That's what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting, we shoot for 1,000 subscribers. And so if you believe that this, this worship service and what we're doing is a blessing to you and it needs to be shared, why don't you share it with somebody and tell them to subscribe to us? Listen, it's not about me. Real talk, this has nothing to do with me. This has to do with what God is doing in and through our church. And we're thanking God for it on a daily basis. And so my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you again, share Messiah with someone else and tell them to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. And um, that's Messiah Movement live stream. And I believe it'll make a difference in their life. Amen. Listen, let's go to God in prayer, get into this message and, and see what God has in store. All right, let's pray. Well, God, we thank you. Um, again, for this day, thank you for this opportunity to worship. Thank you, dear God, for now this, this, this message that we are about to hear. We are sitting at your table, um, waiting attentively to hear from you. Now, God, you, you place this message on my heart and in my mind. I just ask now that you take my mouth and use it for your glory. Uh, allow the words to come out that 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 it might reach your people and even reach me as I'm preaching it. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, just to hear from you. Thank you for the word that you have for us. Thank you for this this series that we've been able to enjoy this past month. God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, and we ask now your blessings upon this word. Now, if there's anyone, Lord, who's going through, allow this word to be one of encouragement. If there's anyone that does not have a home, we pray, dear God, that they find a home in Messiah. If there's anyone that does not have a Savior, hasn't accepted their Savior, hasn't accepted your son Jesus as Lord and Savior, God, we pray that you touch their hearts today, that they surrender who they are and discover who Jesus is. We thank you, God, for what will come out of this message. We thank you, dear God, for the fruit that it will bear. We give it all to you now, and we ask it. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all, one more time. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise today. Amen. Well, as I said earlier, we're coming to the close of our sermon series, uh, Sermons from the Summer. And I want to close today in the book of John, the book of John chapter 9. The book of John chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. So if you have your Bibles, you have your smartphones, got your tablets, open it up with me. John chapter 9 verses one through four, and in your own time, in your own Bible study time, because I know you're studying the Bible in your restful August, um, read the entire chapter of John, uh, the ninth chapter, actually read chapters nine, eight and nine, 
I believe it'll, it'll bless your life. I do believe that it'll bless your life. But because of what we're doing this morning, our time limitations, we're going to focus on four verses. John chapter nine, verses one through four. It reads this way. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? Verse three, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. I wanna focus in on verse four. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. All right, so let me see. Second Sunday in August, we preached um, from the title, uh, I've got next, that we got next. Regardless of what, what the world has in store, we got next because we got Jesus Christ. And then we shifted to ready or not, here I come. Y'all remember that as a child? Ready or not, here I come. And we talked about wherever we are, whatever we're going through, God says, ready or not, I'm coming for you. I'll find you wherever you're hiding. Last week, we talked about share and share alike, that we've got to be willing to share what God has given us to those who are less fortunate, to those who are in need. And so today, I want to focus on verse number four of this ninth chapter of John. It reads again, we must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. Here it is, here it is. For the night is coming and then no one can work. The night is coming and then no one can work. And so my brothers and sisters, just for a couple of minutes, I wanna share with you from this subject, be home before the lights come on. Ah, I know, come on, come back with me, come on, come on. Be home before the lights come home. All of us heard those words, I believe. I believe growing up as a child, all of us heard those words from a parent, from a guardian, from a loved one, be home before the lights come on. Yeah, now some of you all, I know, some of you all was raised in some towns uh, where y'all didn't have no lights, so y'all just had to be home before the lightning bugs came out. That's that. That's downside. But, but, but some of us grew up in some neighborhoods where we had some street lights, and the street lights would come on at a certain time. And, and, and regardless of what we did throughout the day, we had to be home before the lights came on. How many of y'all, come on y'all, let's, let's just reminisce for a moment. Let's go back to our childhood. You remember those days when we would wake up and we eat and we get dressed and we just, we just wanna leave, we wanna go out. We wanna go out and play. And, and, and maybe we wanted to go to a friend's house. Maybe well, our friends, we wanted to, ride on our bicycles to another part of the city. But, but regardless of what we did, there was always those words coming from either my mother or my grandmother. And they say to me before I left the home, now you need to be home before the lights come on. Now, now go ahead, have your fun, enjoy, but you need to be back in this house. Yeah, before the lights come on. That, that meant that you had all of the daylight to have your fun, but when it got dark and the lights came on, you needed to be back home. I reminisced and I thought about that. I thought about that this entire week because I knew I was gonna be preaching this. I knew this was a life lesson I had as a child that I had to share with you. And I hope you appreciate the spin that God has placed upon my heart because when I heard those words as a child, it was just simply in order. It, it was just simply something that I needed to do that, that I could go out and I could have fun. But when the lights come on, I need to be home. I need to be on the porch. I need to be on the premises. That's what I experienced as a child. But this past week, God began to unpack some things for me. And I hope I, I'm able to share it with you without shouting too much. But I realized that, that when, when they shared that with me, as a child, be home before the lights come on. There were some things that were happening that I didn't recognize as a child. Let me show you a few and I hope you can vibe with me this morning. The first thing I realized was they were acknowledging 
that I had a sense of direction. They, they were acknowledging my grandmother and mother. They were acknowledging that I had a sense of direction because they allowed me to leave home. And what they were saying was, be home before the lights come on, which meant that wherever I went, they allowed me to leave home and go to wherever but they were acknowledging that I had a sense of direction that wherever I went and whatever I was doing, I had a sense of knowing where home was. That regardless of the fun that I had and the time that I was spending with my friends, that when the time came, I had to go back home. That wherever I was, it wasn't my permanent home. I hope you can feel me this morning. It was just a temporary place. But when the lights came on, I needed to be back home. I needed to get back home. My brothers and sisters, I need somebody to know this morning that you need to know where home is. And I thank God this morning. I thank God that, that we're going through what we're going through because God is showing me in God's infinite wisdom of where home is. See, some of us thought that home was our church house. We thought that home was the church building. Many of us thought that home was the home that we live in, but, but we've lived long enough through this pandemic to discover that home is where God is. Home is where the spirit abides. Home is where the place where we can seek comfort and we can seek refuge from all that we're going through. And so my parents were acknowledging that I was old enough now to know where home was but that I could go out wherever I wanted to, but I knew my way back home. And I want to share this with somebody who hasn't been home. That's where God is. Regardless of what you're going through and regardless of what you're dealing with, just go back home. Just go back home. Just, just go back to the place where God is waiting with open arms. That's what the prodigal son did. The prodigal son left home planning to never return again. But as the prodigal son uh, wasted all of his resources uh, and found himself in a pig's pen, uh, he came to his senses and said, I can go back home. That's what I love about the Lord, that God has placed some navigational uh, mechanism inside of me. That's the Holy Spirit that lets me go wherever I go. But I've always got something inside of me that leads me back home. Somebody needs to go back home. Listen, you need to be home before the lights come home. It's acknowledging, it's acknowledging, it's acknowledging you got a sense of direction, but also they were acknowledging that they trusted me. Yeah, that they trusted me. I realized, I realized that growing up as a child, like, like the responsibilities or actually um, the opportunities I had grew as I grew in age and grew and matured. Watch this, watch this. As a child, as an infant, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't go outside of the house by myself. Everything that I did as an infant, I had to do in-house. And if I were outside, I had supervision. Somebody was watching me in case I failed. But then as I began to grow and they could trust that I could stand on my own two feet, they let me go out on the porch or in the backyard. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And being in the backyard meant that I could have the freedom of being out there while they would still remain inside. That, that I was solely being able to be trusted that I could be in the backyard or on the porch in their proximity, but still on my own. And once they realized that I learned the rules, about staying inside of the fence, that I learned the rules about leaving the porch or not leaving the porch, then they gave me more responsibility. They, they trusted me with more to the point where I was able, good God of mine, to get on my huffy thunder road and ride around the block. It was no longer riding up and down the driveway, but they gave me the freedom to ride around my block. And when they realized that I learned the directions around my block, when they realized that they could trust me going over a friend's house and coming back in a certain amount of time, then they gave me that freedom. I wish you could see this lesson. Then they gave me the freedom to go out and to do my thing. But the trust was, as you do your thing, Make sure that you get back here before the lights come on. Can I ask you a question? What thing are you doing with the freedom that God has given you? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your time? And what I've learned about this lesson, what I'm learning in this message is that this 
This really symbolizes the life in which we live, that God has to gently remind us that this earth is not our home. This earth is just a, a, a one day period, so to speak, where we are able to go out and do things freely, but God is slowly and gently calling us home. God is saying, here's going to come a time where you've got to come back home, but while you're out there, I've got to believe that you have a sense of direction. You know how to get back home, but God is also saying, but I trust that as you leave this presence, that as I leave you in this world, that, that you are able to make this world a better place. And then the last thing, there was a sense of responsibility. They were acknowledging I was responsible. I was responsible enough to enjoy what I was doing, but responsible enough to know that I need to come back home. Oh, come on back to your childhood. There were some days, there were some days. Listen, listen, let me let, me let y'all have a secret. I didn't have a Timex watch back then. I had a bicycle or a 10 speed. I, I was rolling around, but 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 what I did was, regardless of what I was doing, I'm, I'm using it right now, I'm trying to contain myself. Regardless of what I was doing, I kept track of the sun because, because I was in tune with the day. And I knew, I knew that when a sun reached a, per, a certain part of the sky, that the lights would soon be on. And can I be honest with you this morning? Um, there were times in which I took it right to the very last minute. I took it right to the very last setting of the sun, right before the lights were about to come on. How many of y'all made that mad dash home? You stayed as long as you could, but you knew you couldn't stay there all night. You knew you couldn't stay there before the lights. You had to get out. You had to leave. You had to tell your friends, listen, I got to go. I, I see you tomorrow, but I don't want problems when I get home. And so, and so I made that mad dash home. Home. And sometimes I arrive just in the nick of time. Sometimes I arrived a minute or two after the lights were on, but I was showing that I was responsible with my time, that if they allowed me the freedom to go out and to do, I would be responsible in coming back. Can I blow your mind this morning? Can I show you something that I realized that I didn't see as a child? That there were times in which God allows us to do what we want to do. And God is giving us the responsibility, though, to get back where we need to be. Thanks be to God that even though God has permitted me to have a good time, that God has allowed me to do some things, uh, that God has given me the responsibility to come back home. But just like a child, there have been some times in my life, some times in your life, when life was having, we were having so good of a time in life that we let the lights come on. Can I show you something this morning? Listen, there were times in which I took my chances. I, I made that risk. I said, I'm staying. I ain't leaving. I'm going to stay just a little while longer. And then we have to deal with, with the punishment when I get home. But I was having too good of a time to go home. But can I show you something? That the longer I stayed, what I did not know, when there was somebody at home waiting for me, that there was somebody who was expecting me, I hope you can see this, that there was somebody who knew that I needed to be making my way back home. And there were a few occasions when either my mother or my uncles came looking for me. They, they went to my hiding spots. They went to my hangouts. They, they went to the places they knew I would frequent and they'd see my bicycle or they'd call my name and they'd tell me to come on home. Somebody ought to be shopping right now because you got stuck in some places and you didn't want to turn it loose. You wanted to stay right where you were. But thanks be to God that God left where God was and God came looking for you. I'm in Bible country and you don't even see it because John chapter 9, Jesus is on the move and he's calling people back home. Somebody ought to thank God because you're at home right now because of Jesus. You didn't have sense enough to come home. You wanted to stay out and do what you were doing, but Jesus says, that ain't where you need to be. Come on back home. Is there anybody here that can thank God that when you didn't have sense enough to come home, he came looking for you and he found you up. And yeah, you had to deal with the punishment, but he dealt with it in love. He punished you in love and gave you another responsibility to get it right again. I don't deserve to be where I am. I don't deserve to have what I had, but I serve such an awesome and a loving God. And I serve a savior who comes looking for me. John chapter 9, the scripture opens up and it says that Jesus is on the move. Jesus is on the move. Je Jesus is on the move. 
and 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 he is he is making his way through various cities, through various places on his way, as we know, to Calvary. Um, Jesus is on the clock. L listen, Jesus, Jesus has left home. Come on, he's left home, and he's got a certain amount of period to do what he needs to do because Jesus needs to be home before the lights come on. I know, I'm, that's a stretch. Yeah, Jesus is saying to us, listen, I've got a certain amount of time to do what I need to do. Jesus is on the clock because John says in verse one, as he went along, that, that we're not serving a stationary savior. No, we serve a savior who was on the move. That's why we're Messiah movement because we're not a stationary church. We on the move for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus had an understanding that his ministry was going to be short-lived. And that we know now that it was approximately three years. Three years. That's all the time he was here on this earth doing his ministry. Just three years. Can you imagine only three years of doing his work? And over 2,000 years later, we're still celebrating his work? Listen, don't tell me. Don't, don't, don't tell me about, about God taking folk too soon. The question is... What are you doing with the time that God has given you? This morning, well, actually this past weekend, uh, Shalana and I have been talking along with my, uh, my good friend, homeboy from Texas, Richard. The three of us, we were talking about the death of Chadwick Bozeman, uh, Black Panther, as you know. Uh, she talked about it this morning in Sunday school. I didn't know she was going to talk about it because this is part of my sermon, but that's how God works it. God allows us to be in sync sometimes. And, and, and I was thinking about the life of Chadwick Boseman because as I read about his death Friday evening, it shocked me and stunned me. And, 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 and then I said, wow, at the age of 43, he's dead because of colon cancer. 43, 43 years old, dead because of colon cancer. And then I just began to think like, wow, this young man was a brilliant actor. I mean, the, the roles he had, the, the things that he was able to accomplish at 43, wow, what would his life have been like had he lived another 30 years? What, what, what kind of pictures would he have made? But God had to show me something. God, God, God said, instead of you focusing on him not being here, wow, focus on what he did while the time he was here. Can I show this to you? Can I show this to you? Graduate uh, of Howard University, yeah, the HU in the house. Uh, from the time he graduated from Howard to the time he took his last breath, he starred in some memorable and iconic roles. Just about 20 years. In about 20 years, he played Jackie Robinson. In 20 years, he played James Brown. In 20 years, he played Thurgood Marshall. In 20 years, he, he was Black Panther. He was the first Black real superhero we had on the big screen. Chadwick Boseman became one of the Avengers. He was somebody that we represented. Listen, Wakanda forever was because of Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman worked with Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. He worked with Kevin Costner. He worked with Ryan Coogler. He, he worked with Spike Lee, just to name a few. In 20 years, he did all of that. And God had to show me there's some folk who've been in the business for 50 years. And they haven't done half the stuff he's done. God said, I opened up the doors of opportunity for him. And he walked through the doors and he took advantage of it because he was on the clock. And my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you, just as Jesus was on the clock and just as Chadwick Boseman was on the clock, you are on the clock. And the question is, what are you doing with your time? Why? Because you need to get home before the lights come on. And some of us are sitting around passively waiting for life as it passes us by. Some of us are having discussions about nonsensical things that make no difference in this world. But I hear Jesus saying, I got to be about my father's business because I got to get home before the lights come on. I've got some work to do. I hear Chadwick saying, I've got some roles I need to do. I don't have time to post on Instagram. I don't have time to look for the cloud. I'm trying to make this business work. I'm trying to leave some roles so that young people can see that the impossible can become possible. And I want to leave with you this morning. What are you doing with your time because you own the clock? How about you be about God's business? How about you be about making the world a better place? 
How about you loving somebody and caring from somebody and uplifting somebody instead of tearing somebody down? My brothers and sisters, you are on the clock. Come on, let's push a little further, can we? I'm almost done. Not only, not only as we look at this scripture and Jesus comes across this blind man, he comes across the blind man and the question is asked by his disciples, why is he blind? Why, why is this man blind? Why, why is Jesus, why is this man blind? The, the scripture says that Jesus saw the man. Jesus sees the man and the disciples are talking about the man. Yeah, Jesus sees the man. That means there's some action going on. The disciples are talking about the man, which means they see him, but they're doing nothing. Not, not only must you be about God's business, you not, you're on the clock, but then also you need to be observant of the times. You need to be observant on the time. You're on the clock and you need to be observant of the times. Listen, it wasn't just about the man being blind that this man, this man was an example of the world that was going on during Jesus's time. The man was living in darkness. The world was all about darkness. And Jesus says, I am the light that has come into the world. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his sins or his parents' sins? Jesus is trying to help his disciples understand this is no time for us to be having theological questions about what the Old Testament says about sins, whether it's the parents or the, or the doing of the own person. Jesus is saying, I am the light and I've come into this world to bring light into the darkness. He is observing the time. He's observing that we're living and that he was living in dark times. He was observing that, that the children of Israel were following the customs instead of having a relationship with God. And so Christ comes into the world to reestablish that relationship to die on the cross so that we would no longer be bound by the law, but we would be bound by the love that is found in Christ Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, I believe as we do what we got, do what God has called us to do, we got to be observant of the times. Have you taken a step back and look at what's going on right now? Come on, I know you have. I know you frustrated. I am. But I've realized something. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of having those philosophical discussions about who needs to be in the White House. I'm tired of talking about how we need to vote or is this candidate a good candidate or, or how do we move our way around Trump and his cronies. I'm tired of talking about it. Jesus is helping me understand after you observe the time, what you going to do about it. It's enough talking about folk being hungry and folk needing health care. What are we going to do about their hunger and how are we going to provide adequate health care for them? Christ is empowering us to make a difference in this world. And my question to you today is, are you going to talk about it or are you going to be about it? That's what I learned as a child. That, that's some of the stuff we talked about as kids because it was a lot of times we'd be selling wolf tickets. But the question is, yeah, I hear you talking about it. But are you going to be about it? And I believe that God is challenging our churches today. We've spent enough time talking about Jesus. How about we be about the business of Jesus? How about we observe those who are blind? How about we observe those who are going through oppression and depression? How about we sustain and uplift those who are down at the bottom trying to climb their way up? How about we make a difference in somebody else's life instead of creating all of this padded leisure around our lives? How about we make a difference? We've got to be observant of the times. And so I'm challenging you to understand that you are on the clock. You are on the clock. God has given you a certain amount of days and it's getting late in the evening and you got to get home before the lights come home. So what are you going to do with your time? Be observant of the time, but don't just see it. Do something. Make a difference in their life. Jesus says, Jesus says, it ain't because of his parents. It ain't because of him, it's because of God. And that's my last point, my brothers and sisters, and we done. We on the clock, you on the clock. You got a few minutes and you gotta get home when the lights come on. What are you doing with your time? You gotta be observant of the times. Quit talking about it and be about it. Quit talking about what they're doing and look at what you're doing. Quit talking about what the church isn't doing and you become part of the church and do something about it. Then and only then can we make a difference in the world. And then the last thing, and I'm done, I promise, that we must make obvious who can do it. 
You got to make obvious who can do it. Jesus says it was not because of the sins or his parents' sins. He said this happened to him so the power of God could be seen in him. I'm done. Jesus says the obvious is it happened so that God's power could be seen in him. It's obvious. And you know what? I'm done. We are too busy talking about the obvious. It's obvious you are in pain. It's obvious our country is hurting. It's obvious you might be afraid. It's obvious you broke. It's obvious you've been abandoned. We see that. It's obvious you don't have a car. It's obvious you don't have a job. And my frustration is we just keep recycling and repeating the obvious. It's obvious that things are not going well in your life. But the question is, after you've spoken about the obvious, what you going to do about it? What are we going to say about it? That's what I'm learning. That when I come across those persons who are speaking the obvious to me, I have to let them know of the obvious in their life because they don't see it. Because their pain is too great. Because the brokenness is too large. Because the enemies around them have covered their eyes and, and they are blinded by what they see in front of them instead of seeing who's over them. They are stating the obvious. And my brothers and sisters, when God leads us to individuals like that, better yet, when that happens in your life, you got to make the obvious real. You got to let them know what the obvious is all about. And the obvious is the one who can do it. The obvious is the one who can make a way. I'm holding on to my chair right now because it's obvious. I may not be able to do anything in the White House. I may not be able to change my financial situation. I may not be able to do anything with my body that's tearing down, but I know somebody who can do something about it and it's obvious what he can do. That's why we have the Bible to remind us that it's obvious that God can do more than what man can do. If it's obvious that he can create the world in six days, if it's obvious that he can give a child to somebody who's 100 and who's 90, if it's obvious he can part a Red Sea, if it's obvious he can feed us in our wilderness, if it's obvious he can get water from a rock, if it's obvious he can help David kill Goliath, if it's obvious he can help Solomon be the wisest man, if it's obvious he can get Daniel out the lion's den, if it's obvious he can get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of a fiery furnace, if it's obvious he can have Mary be born of a virgin or give birth and she was a virgin, if it's obvious his son can die on the cross, and it's obvious he can come out of the grave, then it's obvious that God can work a miracle in your life. I'm done. But it's obvious, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can certainly do for you, my brothers and sisters. It's getting late in the evening and I gotta go now. I only got a few years, I only got a few minutes to live on this earth, but while I am alive, I'm gonna make the most of it because I am on the clock. I want to make a difference in this world. I, I want to observe what's going on and I want to be proactive. I, I want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And whenever I get an opportunity to tell somebody who's speaking the obvious of what's going on in their life, I want to speak the obvious to them. There is a man named Jesus uh, who came through 40 and two generations, uh, who was born of a virgin, uh, who lived, who bled and died. But early Sunday morning, uh, he got up from the grave. Uh, and if it's obvious he got up from the grave, it's obvious you can get up from your pain. Uh, you can get up from your abandonment. Uh, you can get up from your brokenness. Uh, you can get up from anything because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Can the church say amen? Can the church say amen? Be home before the lights come home. We'll see you next week. Y'all have a wonderful day. Be blessed in the Lord. I'm done. Amen. <laughs>